Hello, my name is Hector. Welcome back to How to Play FDB Revelation. We are back here. We are back here last episode. We set this up. We got some ore doubling and we made our pickaxe a little bit better. We made a little bit, a little bit of an improvement. I've got some iron in there and let's get that out. There we go. Now, what we can also do just to start off right away, right away, is what we can do is let's let's put what 12 in there and actually 15 15 cobble and um, if we wanted to make this even bigger which i actually did i actually added another rung because i had a few seared bricks left and um, what we can do is let's chuck some of this cobble in and what this will do is it will make seared stone seared cobble basically uh there you go. seared cobblestone and that will work the same as seared bricks. So if you didn't want to get all of that sand and clay to make the grout, you could just make the tiniest little smeltery and then just put a lot of cobble in there and build it out like that. How much of this have we got left? Two ingots, one ingot, and no ingots. Excellent. Bam. Let's get you off. And I will, I will start to show you then once we get a little bit of this. I put some more lava in as well. How is everyone doing? I hope you are doing well. Hope you are having a lovely day wherever you may be. Whatever time it may be. There we go. We've got that. We've got that now. Let's get some of you out so we can pour you out like this. There we go. And this is what it looks like. There you go. Seared stone. Ah, oh, so we actually get stone because it is uh, it is this. But there you go. That's what it looks like, and this will work exactly the same as seared brick. So you could keep adding uh, and not have to keep making the grout and then smelting that. Just a, an extra little way of uh, of sorting that out, which is, is really nice. Now, we're going to be looking at some other things today. We're going to be upgrading our tool station, uh, and we're going to be sorting out our our armor or at least part of our armor and um, there are many different armors and um, if we look if we look there's always there's always in um no there's not a lot there if we maybe look at um let's look at leggings there we go there's a lot of different leggings that you can see so obviously we have the standard the very standard um vanilla stuff but you have obviously Britannia there a deep resonance uh, draconic stuff and then you've got some things from nuclear craft in here you've got thermal uh, foundation redstone arsenal a lot of the thermal foundation so all of these are just like basically they are the standard vanilla things the vanilla armor sets but with different with just different um ingots different resources so they are made exactly the same way exactly the same recipes but just with different things and you can see they have some of these have a different, so there you go, tin leggings are three armor, silver leggings a little bit better. And you can see nickel leggings, pretty good. Platinum leggings, very good. Look at that, six iron armor, two diamond armor, which is pretty good. So you can you can make your own armor set, it's up to you. I've been using, um, I've been using boron because I've never I've never used nuclear craft before, so why not? I've been using some boron, so I made myself a set of boron um, things. Let's have a look at this. Get you out as well. The next thing I want to do is upgrade our tool forge because these tools are they're all right, they're okay, but we can we can do better. We can do better, uh, and what we need is we need some more iron. We'll be needing three iron blocks, so let's get you out like that. Uh, and what it's called, the next level up, is a tool forge, like that. And there you go. These are the different ways of making it. So you don't have to make it with iron, but generally you will probably have iron in a, in a ready supply more than anything else. But maybe you want to use lead instead because you don't use as much lead, which is not a bad thing. So you could make it out of blocks of lead. So you could do that, and you need some seared bricks. So any seared bricks, including seared stone and seared cobble, which is why I've just made these here like that. There we go. We need four, four blocks of iron. One, two, three, four. There we go. Lovely stuff. And we also need another, another tool station. So what you're most likely going to be doing is just getting your tool station that you've already made upgrading it there we go and we now have a tool forge place that down in the exact same place as you did 
And now, when we click on that, look at this. We have some extra items. Some extra items open up and different things. So the hammer, the hammer is a, is a broad mining tool. It harvests blocks in a wide range. So the hammer generally does uh, like a three by three area. It is very, very good to make. You can see what components you need, um, large plates. So these things as well, rather than just making them in here, you would use the smeltery and get some better items. If you remember, we looked through some of the different modifiers uh, in here that you can use, different tool materials that have different things, different, um, different uh, levels and different attributes, as well as the modifiers as well. So you can make your own different types of tools. I'll leave that to you to have a play around, look up some tutorials maybe. Um, what we're gonna be making today is the lumber axe. It's a broad chopping tool. It can fell entire trees in one swoop or gather wood in a wide range. That's great, that's some great stuff. So we need tough tool rod, so a tough tool rod, not a standard one, broad axe head, large blade and tough binding. So I'm gonna get some stuff together to make that and uh, we'll, we'll then make it. There we go, I've got a lumber axe now, and what I've done, and you don't have to do this, you can do something completely different. I've gone for a copper tough tool rod, which gives the well-established, you gain additional XP, which is great. And I've gone for a large obsidian plate, which your tool lasts longer most of the time. Now, you don't have to do this. I've also gone for paper binding, just to get an extra modifier, uh, and just a stone broad axe head, which means we can repair it with cobble. You can obviously change up. You can do a few other things. Um, it's up to you. You don't have to do it this way around. I'm also gonna immediately put a diamond on it to give it 500 extra XP, uh, which is great. Uh, I mean durability, just to make it last a little bit longer. And I'm also gonna put haste on it just to make it a little bit faster. So there we go. That's what I've done. You might, for instance, you might want to, instead of instead of making it out of copper, maybe you want, maybe you want to make it out of firewood. Harvested blocks get smelted. So for instance, um, <clears throat> rather than getting wood, you might want to get charcoal, which you can use obviously in furnace. For instance, now, if we use our um, lumber axe, there you go, look at that. It immediately chops down the entire thing and you can see we got, a, we got a little bit, just a little bit of XP from that. So let's try that again. There we go, and you can see it, it gives us XP and that's because of the copper, which is excellent. So that's a nice easy way of chopping down wood, getting a lot more wood. Um, you can see I've also now got some iron, uh, no, some boron armor. So hopefully you've got some armor, but let's do something a little bit more about getting round. Now, you might have seen some of these in your world. These are slime islands. And if you can see, um, slimes can spawn up there and they sometimes drop down. Now, if they're not over an ocean, what you'll most likely see down here is just slime balls. So what you wanna do is pick some of those slime balls up, but you also want to get up there. And what you'll see once you get up here is something like this, a whole lot of slimes that are constantly spawning. And now you can see they are blue slimes, not the usual vanilla green slimes. And what you wanna do is you want to get some of this dirt, uh, it might be a different color as well, might be blue, might be green, it doesn't really matter, just get some of this dirt and chop down some of those trees, the slime trees, and you should get some saplings. That is what you are after. You want the saplings from the, the trees and you want some dirt. And with that, we can do something lovely. So we are back. I'm about to make a watering can, which is just any sort of stone and a bowl like that. This is from Extra Utilities too. So you need to come over and then just go to any water source. It can be just a single water source as well. And you can see if you right click on it, it fills up the bar, it fills it up with water. There we go. Lovely. And what we can do is we can accelerate the growth of crops. So we got some slime saplings, so some blue ones, and we've got some dirt as well. Now these slime slap <laughs> slime saplings can only be placed on different types of slimy dirt or slimy grass. Okay, that's the way it works, so be sure. Now if we right click on this now, what we'll do is it will accelerate the growth. Now it is not instant. 
as you can see, but it does have an effect. And you can use this on anything. You can use this on crop growth. You can use this on normal vanilla saplings, but it's just a way of just accelerating the growth a little bit, okay? So that's just a little tip. We won't continue doing that. I'll wait for these to grow. But what you can see now is I've got some different boots on and I've got this sling. So these are made from slime. This is one of the reasons why we wanted this. So let's have a look. Uh, the slime sling is made from slime balls, uh, string and congealed uh, slime block, which is just basically four of any slime together. And this works with any slime. Uh, and if you cut down th these trees, what you will get is you'll get some congealed green slime blocks anyway. So that is always a good thing. And then the boots. The slime boots are made simply like this. So one congealed slime block and some slime balls. And what does this do, you may ask? Well, that is a very good question. These slime boots are, they are bouncy. So if we if we come up here and uh, if we take a bit of a running jump, there you go, you can see I'm bouncing around. And they also prevent fall damage, which is no mean thing. But the biggest, coolest thing is this slime sling. Charge up. Aim low, get flinging. Use slime boots if you value your life. So that's what it means. So basically, if we see that, you can see it almost like a bow. It, it charges up. What you want to do is basically aim low or at least, well, you'll see. You'll see. If I release now, it propels me up into the air. Look at that. Look at that. Excellent. And if you want to stop bouncing, you press shift and you might take a little bit of damage. So you want to do it once you're a bit lower. This is the this, this is the thing that you do. But to get around, you can just do that. Look at that. And it, this goes really quite far. I won't do it now, but it's a good early way of getting around using Tinkers. Now, you may have been wondering what this is for the last couple of episodes. A mega torch. You'll want one of these as soon as you get some kind of smeltery going or you just want to spend some gold. What this does, it prevents hostile mobs from spawning in a 32 block radius. So if you put this down in the middle of your base, it is essentially exactly the same as lighting your base up and nothing will spawn as I say, in a 32 block radius. So this is really great. So if you want to know the recipe, let's have a look quickly. Mega torch. There you go. Uh, it is two diamonds and yeah, two blocks of gold, which is why having a smeltery or some sort of ore doubling capability is recommended. But there you go. You can put these all around your base, 32 blocks, no hostile mobs. Right, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to be making a, a hammer because that will help out with our mining. We need that, we need extra mining because modded is all about resource gathering. So we need a good way of doing it. What we're going to be doing, we're not only going to be using the slime for that, we're also going to make a, a hammer out of slime. And the way you do this is combine some of this slime that you've got with sand and dirt and it will it will get green slimy mud. So we've got 16 of that and we need to smelt this up now. And what we're also going to do is if we just take that away, uh, we're going to make some of that as well. Um, we should be able to make three like that. We're also going to smelt that up and we're going to use this to make a hammer. Now these slimes, different colors have different properties. So if I have a look over here, uh, you can see Durability is 350 and modifiers is 0.7 for the green slime. If we turn over the page, the blue slime, however, modifiers 1.3, but durability is a little bit less. So it depends how you want to do this. There's also the magma slime, which is, of course, another different thing. It gives the flammable option. And if you put it on the head, on the head uh, of the tool, deal bonus damage to enemies on fire. So... There's different things. We're just going to have blue and uh, green slime. So you can see it produces green slime crystal or, of course, blue slime crystal. And um, with this, you can use it to make a tool rod or different parts of the tool in the normal tinker. So you don't have to smelt it up in here. And there are, of course, different slime saplings as well. The blue ones will have... Uh, they'll, they'll be able to sometimes, if we look at... Can we... Can we see maybe? I don't think so in this. No, there's no way of looking up. That's a shame. Um, it does have a, a chance of dropping blue uh, slime balls as well. 
not just the green stuff and obviously a more saplings you do get a chance of getting blue slime balls so that's how you get them and purple as well is another variety so let us go back here let's do this this is almost done let's go to the part builder we need a tough tool rod and that's what we're going to be making out of this so a slimy tough tool rod like that very nice um let's see how we're doing we need eight of these to make um the large plates we need two large plates and the hammerhead itself so let's at least make one of these there we go uh part builder here we are we need another one of these and the hammerhead uh yeah, hammerhead, exactly. We get one of these like that. There we go. And we need just three more. Just three more. There we go. We've got the three. Let's come back in here. Let's get... We don't need another hammerhead. We need a large plate. So, let's go over. You can see here, this is the, this is, this is the pattern that you need. One over here and one over here. And there you go. Look at that. Durability 3125, which is crazy and we have a modifier as well on top of that which is great just one modifier which is you know it's not too bad it's not brilliant but that's what you get for basically you know messing around you can do these in a different thing so maybe you think hey i don't need that much durability you might want to take that down a little bit perhaps and upgrade it but we're going to be using this like that uh, and what we're going to do as well and uh, if we take out um, what we could do is, you see, mining level iron. So right now, this is, if we look at the stats, mining level is stone, which is okay, but you might want it to be a little bit better. So if we, ah, do we have any flint? I don't think I do have any flint. <laughs> of course I don't. Of course I don't. Let's just, have I got gravel? I have gravel. Let me just quickly get some flint. There we go. I have some flint. So let's upgrade this. So like we did for this and uh, we put fortified obsidian you can put a stone sharpening kit with a bit of flint and there we go it is now iron level and this does not use one of the modifiers which is particularly great because what we can do now is of course put some put some redstone on and make this go a little bit faster there we go bonus speed plus 20 percent haste or one excellent so let's go test out this new tool so here we are and look at this go. Look at how great this is for mining. And it is fairly quick. Oh, look at that. Little little extra slime. There we go. We must be in a slime chunk, uh, which is great. And if you want to actually find out about slime chunks, you can actually pick up a little slime in a bucket and it will tell you um, it will tell you if you are in a slime chunk because this little slime in the bucket will actually jump up and down. I can't show you. I shouldn't have killed that. Um, but there you go, this is another great way of getting some early resources. And you can see now, and because we upgraded it, um, we, oh, we we can't actually get redstone because it's still iron level. So this needs diamond level, but it will be able to get iron ores. There we go. It can't get magnesium. And this is now the thing. This is the only annoying thing. You could obviously upgrade this to cobalt like we did with our pickaxe. That's the thing that's easily done. And you might want to... Uh, level it up to get some more modifiers on there make it faster maybe make it more durable it's up to you and um, you totally can i definitely level this up a little bit more and you can this is another cool thing you could do different things with this say say you want to um make this auto smelt as well you can add some firewood again harvested blocks get smelted which means that it would be like silk touch in this case you could easily um uh, instead of cobble, you could be getting stone up to you. That's a thing that you could do. Um, another thing that you could do is modifiers. You could make this bigger. So you could add some height or width uh, to the tool. There you go. Increases the height of the area affected or increases the width. So if you added width, for instance, rather than 3x3, three three, this would be a 5x3, which would be pretty cool so it's up to you you can do different things but this will definitely help you get some more resources and there you have it hopefully that helped you progress a little bit further 
in modded Minecraft. If it did, a like or comment would be very much appreciated. And of course, if you've got any more tips, please do let everyone know in the comment section. And likewise, if you've got any questions, do the same and I will try to help you. But hopefully you've got a little bit further in your understanding of some modded Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Hector. This has been How to Play FTB Revelation. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.